What's up everybody, I'm Ken. Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC and today we have got the top three mods for the new FMS FCX 24 K5 Blazer. These are must do free mods. Let's check them out. So before we dive into this, why don't you guys go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, and share if you have been to the channel before and you know you like the content. If you're new, you can wait till the end of the video, see if this helped you out. If it helped you out, that click on that subscribe button, it's just a click for you. But it means the world to me. And sharing this video with other people that are new, or this is their first crawler, or they just, uh, they're getting their first FCX24, it'll help a ton. It helps them, it helps me, and it lets us bring you more content that shows you how to do awesome things and shows you awesome new products. Anyway. We also have some swag. Check that down below. If you want to help support the channel that way, we don't make much money on it. Maybe a dollar or two per shirt or hoodie, but uh, you can help represent by showing off your love for the channel. All right, so the new FCX 24 K5 Blazer. This thing is awesome. It's an awesome hard body. Uh, it's got the portal axles. One of my main problems with this guy, though, is it sits kind of high, right? So it sits kind of high, so we're going to look at lowering it. It's also super bouncy. Look at this. Man, that's just crazy bouncy, right? And the turn radius isn't the best. So we're going to address those three things. We're going to oil fill the shocks. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to lower it or raise where the shocks are mounted on the shock towers. I'm going to show you that. There's also another option. We'll talk about that. And then I'm going to get you some better turn radius out of the box. All right. So first things first, let's look at that turn radius. So actually, one of the first things I want to show you is how to set forward and reverse and forward brake reverse, as well as our drag brake. So all you have to do is double click the reverse button here twice. I'm oh, sorry. Click, click. Got to be quick. It'll start blinking. Now you've got the uh, drag brake 0, 50, 75, and 100. So if you just hit 100, now you have 100% drag brake. Or you can go to 0, and it's got 0 drag brake. Okay. Now, mind you, depending on which gear you're in, it's going to feel different um, just because of the gear ratio. But throttle plus is going to give you 100% drag brake. Also, it comes out of the box, forward, brake, reverse. So you go forward, brake, reverse. Okay, all you gotta do is hit bind, and now you got forward, reverse. Simple as that. Okay, and then you can double click reverse again, and you're out of the uh, settings mode. Now, the next thing is your steering dual rate and, and your throttle dual rate. They work the same way. So you can see we don't have a ton of turning here, but what you can do is you turn full lock and then hit plus on your trim, and you can see it'll put your dual rate all the way. Okay. Now we have a ton more steering and we're going to be able to get more with this mod I'm about to show you. Same goes with throttle. If you want to turn your under throttle, you can give it full throttle and then turn it down just like that. So now you've got a real slow speed. You brought your dual rate on your throttle way down, maybe for the kids. Or you can speed it back up. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that steering mod. I'm going to show you the difference between a modded and a non-modded. So you can see here, we've got the mod and the non-mod. Now you may not be able to tell just by this, but we'll throw them on the ground and I'll show you the difference in turn radius. So here's straight out the box, stock turn radius. And here we are with the screws moved to the back and the dual rate turned up. So pretty big difference. Basically the width of the truck in turn radius. So how we're achieving that better turn radius, if you notice here, when we turn, the knuckles and the drag link or the steering link actually hit on these two little screws that are holding our C-hubs in. On our truck, here, we just move those screws to the back. Now, a lot of people that do FCX 24s know about this mod, but again, this is for the new guys that just picked up the K5 and it's their first FCX 24. So now your knuckles can go all the way, okay? You still want to be careful on your dual rate. You may want to turn that down just a little bit if you find yourself 
uh, going, your servo's still throwing even though the wheels won't. So you can always turn that down just a little bit. That'll help save your servo. Uh, but these do have servo savers, so it's less of a worry on these guys. So all you gotta do, like I said, is you take this, you don't have to take your body off. You unscrew your knuckle uh, and C-hub screw right here. Literally a 30 second mod. Pull this screw out, throw it in the back. Simple as that. Now you can see on this guy, when I turn, we get that much turn radius, but this one gets just a little more. That extra millimeter or two millimeters of that screw head will actually make a huge difference when you're out on the, the trails and on the, on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and then we're gonna look at the shocks. All right, so this is what it looks like out of the box. Super bouncy, right? And then you add some shock oil and it really changes how it feels. Like a lot, okay? So it's not nearly as bouncy and it has nothing to do with the weight because this was just as bouncy when I took the cab off uh, before I did the shock oil. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you the shock oil. So this is a super simple mod. Again, anybody can do this. These mods I'm showing you are really for the new, new guys that maybe you're scared to take your truck apart, you don't know where to start, or maybe you just want a little extra performance, you're not trying to do a bunch of upgrades. Um, so you can pull your wheel and tire off and that'll make it easier to get this off, but if you're careful, you can usually just pop this guy right off the ball joint, just like so, okay? And then when you put it back on, it's a little, little hard. You can always use some pliers and just kind of go back on with the pliers like this basically from the back side. Don't squeeze super hard if it doesn't want to go, but it shouldn't take much and you're good to go. All right, our remote was still on. That's cool about these uh, new ones. The remotes kind of give you a little alert if you have no activity. All right, so we got our shock off. All we gotta do now is take it apart. Um, I recommend using like a shock tool or if all you have is pliers. Again, most new guys only have pliers. Make sure you get some paper towel Go ahead and go like so. I would try to wrap this guy here in paper towel, and then you can use your pliers. You don't want to scuff up, make sure you're not smashing your, your spring. You want to make sure you don't scuff up the shock shaft, and then you can unscrew your shock eye here, the uh, ball joint eyelet. Okay. And then your spring can come off. You can also unscrew this top portion Oops. and your shaft can come out. So you can see the whole shock here. And then there's this little cap here and it's just pressured on. You can usually stick your fingernail under there or an exacto and just kind of pop it off or even a small flat head. And there you go, there's your whole shock, okay? So now we fill it with oil. So in your little bag of goodies that comes with your uh, K5, you've got some O-rings and some, we believe they're shims. I'm not totally sure what the the washers are used for, but all the O-rings are for the shocks. And you're basically gonna use two O-rings, two of the small O-rings uh, around the shock shaft, and one of the larger O-rings around the shock housing. So like I said, take one of the larger O-rings and that just goes around the shock housing on the top. And go ahead and put our shock shaft back in. You'll then take two small O-rings and put them on the shaft. The idea here is that when, let me get the other one on there, when the shock compresses, the top O-ring will seal this side, and when it extends, the bottom shock O-ring will seal this side. So it helps prevent leaking on both sides, okay? Also, they're in there pretty tight, so they're not really gonna move much, but you can see they kind of sit down in that little cup. You should be good there. Some people will put uh, a thicker oil or grease on here to help prevent leaking, but we haven't had any issues with leaking, but if you do, maybe consider that. So we'll go ahead and put those guys in there, put our cap on, and it should get nice and snapped on there, or get close anyway. Okay. And then you can actually just take your 1.5. You can go ahead and 
go like so. Oh, we Get this guy back on there. Which again, is another way to take it off if you don't want to use pliers and a paper towel. Once there's oil in there though, it's kind of messy to do it this way, so. But yeah, okay. And now you're gonna feel some resistance and it's not gonna feel very good because you need to get oil onto those O-rings to help it slide through. Now we're gonna go ahead and use some of this TLR Team Losi Racing 20 weight. Um, it's 20 weight and 200, well, almost 200 CST. You can experiment with different oils um, and different weights. Also, a lot of people say they put like three drips in. We kind of fill this guy all the way to the top. Well, not all the way to the top. We put a little bit in and then we work it because you don't want it to push out. See how it's kind of pushing out? So we'll work it, let it slowly drop down underneath the shaft and into the bottom cup. And then it'll start to feel real smooth. And kind of let it fill and let the air kind of come out of the inside of here. Let oil drop down in, okay? So once we've kind of worked that down, go ahead and do a couple more drips, drippy drops. Okay, and then I'll usually just kind of cover it with a paper towel and completely compress it, okay? And what that does is it tells me that I'm completely compressed without oil pushing out, okay? And you can see it kind of drops down. It kind of cavitates down in there. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and put our top back on. I like to compress it a little bit when I'm putting the top back on to help get some of the air out. And we'll put our shot cap on. Nice and tight, Let's clean them off. It's a little messy sometimes. Depends if you've got, uh, some people use syringes and stuff. And then make sure that it compresses all the way. If it doesn't want to compress all the way and it feels like there's like resistance, if you keep pushing it, this cap will pop off. Um, but that means you have too much oil in there. Okay, so now there's no spring. It's got some dampening here, and I'll go ahead and show you compared to one without oil in it. It just shoots right back out versus on this guy, it's actually dampened. So that makes a huge difference in how bouncy your truck is. So we're gonna go ahead and do all four of these and get them back on. And like I said, you should be able to put these guys back on by hand, but if you need to use uh, a pair of pliers or something you can. Just be sure you don't mar it up. You just got to get it lined up, get it on there flat, and then you can just kind of push it. Using your thumb will definitely make it easier. Your thumb is strong. See? Ta-da! And now, look at that. There's like no bounciness versus the back. Super bouncy. Okay, and there we have it. Nice and dampened, no more bouncy. Okay, so they both have oil shocks now. So you notice there's a huge difference in my full compression these in the right heights. I can go ahead and measure this out for you real quick. Full compression on this guy, we're looking at two and a half, maybe three millimeters in the front, two and a half in the front, maybe three. And then the rear is basically three. Whereas on this guy, the rear is five, almost six. And the front, we're basically at the same, maybe five and a quarter, uh, three quarters, five and three quarters, maybe five and a half. So it's about a two millimeter difference between the two. And I can try to show you just on the black truck because I have one side done, right? And one side not done. So you can kind of see the difference there and you can really see it when it's straight on so you can see there it's got a little bit of a lean and then same on the rear it's going to be leaning a little bit more on this side let me get it centered for you okay so we lowered that ride height and there's a couple different ways to do this one way is the way we did it, which is we mounted the shocks higher up on the shock tower. Another way is to clip the springs and actually just lower it, and then you end up with more droop. Uh, droop is how far your wheels and tires drop when you lift it up. So when you're sitting at regular ride, you have like a ride height, right? 
and then there's a little bit of because of the weight of the body um, there's compression on the springs and when you lift it it droops so that's your droop amount okay so if it drops down three millimeters you have a three millimeter droop uh, a lot of guys at least when you're getting into you know cop crawling and stuff like that it depends on i guess how your rig is set up but a lot of guys like to have like a 50 50 so the the truck is riding right in the middle of the spring and when you lift it up it drops that much and when you compress compress it draw it, you know you have the same amount of compression travel okay so just about like what this guy has here um if you cut the springs you end up riding further down on the shock shaft which isn't necessarily good but it's not bad either it's it's, it's another way of setting it up um, but I like to have the full spring as much as I can and kind of make the spring work. Now, the reason we're dropping is not just because we raised the shock mount. Let me show you that. Because we didn't raise the shock mount two or three millimeters, even though that's how much our truck drops down. We only move the shock mount from the center of the shock tower over to this corner. I'll go ahead and pull this guy off and show you. Actually, you can probably, we'll pull these guys off because I'm going to reposition them anyway. So I'll pull this back shock off. I've already got the holes. And it's simple. Basically, just take a Dremel or a drill, take like a 1.5 drill bit, because these are twos, right? So you want it to be slightly undersized so that you can create threading. And we just put the hole right there, right there in the corner. So we raised it by maybe a millimeter, maybe two. Let's see. Uh, a little more than I thought, two and a half. Yeah, right about two and a half millimeters. Um, so we also brought it in maybe a millimeter or two. So not only did we raise it, right? We went up, we also went in and by angling your shocks inward towards your link pivot points, right? The closer your shock is inward towards your links, the more articulation you're going to get. So we gained a little bit of articulation while also lowering the truck. Um, it's also going to make our springs work differently. If your springs are straight up and down, then they're, you know, just vertical, essentially, your spring is going to have its full workload. It's going to work to the max. It's basically going to lift your truck as much as it possibly can based on your spring rate. But as you start to bend your shock inward, that spring can't work the same. So it's weaker. So you actually will get more droop while your truck will sit lower, which means that when you lift the truck, it'll drop down further, uh, not just from the angle, but from how the shock is working. Um, so I just want to show that we basically moved from here to here and it makes a huge difference in our ride height. Now, if you're gonna change to bigger wheels and tires or bigger tires, especially, you're probably gonna end up rubbing a little if you do this mod, but I don't wanna go big tires on this guy. I like to keep them kind of scale looking. And I think these tires are kind of a perfect size. And if we were to ever change out tires, at some point I'm sure we will, we'll go with this size or maybe even a little smaller, just a little bit. Now, one thing to remember, if you clip your springs, which a lot of people will do uh, just to make your spring shorter, you are going to change the spring rate, which means your body weight and stuff like that will affect it more. It affects it this with this as well um, because of the angle. But again, we have a full spring here that's helping support the upper body and the chassis. Okay. One thing we did have to do, and I'll show you on the body, but it's not a big deal, is we had to trim in just a little bit. You can see the shape of this. We basically took this portion here because the shock is now more forward and we just trimmed this down a little bit and the screw goes through here and it kind of hits right on here. So we have to trim this down a little too. So we just open that up. We just did it from the bottom side. We just went ahead and used the Dremel. I'll show you real quick. Kept our top looking good, right? And we just dremeled it down and then we also could just take the X-Acto and just kind of cut it in. You can do it either way. I'll just take this little chunk out. And if you have the black body, you can uh, use some black nail polish. You can be a slacker like we did and just sharpie it. But just take off a little at a time. and do a nice clean job and you can't even tell on the top side okay so that way when you put your truck body back on your shocks fit in there just fine probably have taken just a little bit off but i wanted to make sure there was plenty of clearance nothing was rubbing or binding okay 
and now our truck sits much lower under natural ride height. Okay, so full compression, articulation side to side. Okay, so you will rub a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Again, it just looks a lot more better than sitting like this, right? Now when it sits, it sits much more scale looking. We'll compare that to the orange one, which sits kind of high. I'd rather have it down like this. It's hard to tell with the black truck, but it is definitely lower by a couple millimeters. Three to four. All right. Well, I hope you guys learned something with these little stock trucks. Got three free mods to help it uh, look and perform a little better. And yeah, we're, we're really digging these guys. They're real fun. They're super capable. And I'm really liking that we can swap out the toppers and you got the bumper options and the roof rack options and just a lot of cool stuff. There's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff coming for these trucks. I am sure of it. And uh, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have these guys perform really, really well right out the box. I mean, you don't have to do anything to them and they perform really well, but just do a couple mods like I showed you, lower it a little bit, add that oil, get that extra turn radius. Man, they are beasts for the real. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Watch, go ahead and like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell so that you know when all the new videos come out. And check out our swag below for sure. Be sure to support the channel when you can, where you can, however you can. And get out there and build something awesome. Build a car, build a course, build a community, and then smash it, crash it, and bash it. But don't break the expensive parts.